Welcome to the latest edition of Business Spotlight. I'm joined today by Bev Kent, who is the founder of Futures Recruitment Services. So welcome, Bev. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bev, let's find out a little bit more about what it is that your, your business does and, and where you work. Tell us a little bit more about what you do. Okay, well, um, we are known as a, a generalist agency, which broadly means that we can cover all aspects of recruitment from temporary contract, interim, right through to permanent placements. So we would then cover all aspects of commercial work and on the industrial side, probably just temporary placements. But we cover a broad range of recruitment. It's known as generalist recruitment. Okay. And do you have a, a particular demographic in terms of the geography of where you work? Well, Chichester-based and obviously having been established for nearly 25 years, we began very, I mean, in the days before the internet was so widely used, um, we had very strong relationships with the local business community. Um, and as time's gone on, I mean, the fantastic and excite, it's, it's very exciting to be able to speak to businesses um, in Scotland or in the north. Um, so we can and do recruit across the UK, obviously locally, more so where our foundation is, but we have the adapt adaptability and uh, capability of working where the clients take us, really. And this is this is your business. You set it up about well, 24, 25 years ago now. What, what was it that inspired you to set up your own business? You were working previously in the recruitment sector? I was. I'd been in recruitment for probably 10, 12 years, and I had been in that nice position of working for small independent agencies um, and trusted to really I was running other people's businesses and the last role that I had I, I, I ran the commercial side of, of the business things weren't going that well for them as a business but I and I, I just felt that it was time that I could and should maybe if I was going to, to work for myself maybe that was the time to do it so inspired to go and do my own thing I left um took six months out to, to plan and design the paperwork and what was yeah, it going to be pleased to hear it? pleased to hear the planning went into it yes well a bit not yeah. as much as I should have done I don't think but um yeah and then I I sort of opened the door of a very small office one July day in 1999 with the sandwiches and a you know flask of coffee and thought well here I am let's go and what's more important is here you you still are. And we're gonna we're gonna look at the longevity in in a minute. But um, you know, I've heard it said many times that the recruitment agency is the sort of the barometer of the economy and it's tends to look a little bit ahead as to whether people feel it's gonna grow or gonna shrink, etc. Mm. Um, what have you noticed over the last couple of years? What sort of patterns have you seen and where are we now, would you say? Well, obviously it's been quite a roller coaster. Um and you know, prior to to the pandemic, I think most the, the, the economy was strong. The housing market was very strong. Um, <clears throat> I think if the housing market's doing well, we do well. It, it seems to go very much hand in hand. But mm. um, obviously, the pandemic slowed everybody down and changed so much about the way we work and what was going on and what vacancies were available. As a business, we were able to adapt to COVID requirements and, and you know, that was a different way of working. Um, then, strangely enough, there was an outbreak pandemic boom. I mean, I think a lot of people did quite well after that. They'd, they'd expanded if, if they'd done well through the, the, the pandemic and, and there was a, a, we had a very, very strong year and now... Clearly, um, the war in Ukraine and things going on globally have affected our own economy. We've got high inflation. We everybody knows knows this story, 
But what it's done is, I mean, we're not in an official recession, but I would just call it a suppression. Mm. It's it's not bad. It's not great, but it's different. And a lot of our clients and companies that we speak to are, are running what I call lean and mean. They're recruiting permanent staff because of the, the people shortage. So they want to secure talent, but that in effect has had a knock on of their temporary requirements. So if their order books aren't particularly full and they've been running on 10 temps a week, let's say, they've maybe reduced that to two or three. Yeah. And I think the knock on, it's not widely talked about on the news, but I think the knock on of Brexit has, we've seen a shortage of. East European workers and order books for our manufacturing companies. So, yeah, it's I I call it a suppression. Yeah, I like I like the I like the term, and it's um an interesting the way that you described all the sort of facets of of that and the you know and, and how things um you know interact and interrelate with each other. Mm. Nevertheless, um, your business has done something that many businesses don't manage to do. Um, not only survive beyond the first five years, but the next five years after that and the next five years after that. So congratulations on the on the longevity of it. What what do you put that down to? Is there any particular aspects that you can that come to mind to say, explain why you've you've managed to keep the business growing and developing over that period of time? I think um my my philosophy of the client it comes, you know, clients' happiness and satisfaction is everything. And I think because we were born in an era perhaps where it was a slightly more innocent time where you, you visited people, you, you had a much greater human interaction. So you visited or you, you met with them, you you saw all your candidates face to face. And so we developed very, very strong foundations of relationships. And that policy and philosophy has been always been carried through the business that we want to know our people, we want to know our candidates, we want to know our businesses really well, which means that you forge strong relationships and you forge loyalty. And loyalty goes both ways, you know, us to the client and the client back to us. And then your clients, some of them become friends and it evolves, really. It just evolves and it's it's all about communication and relationships. That's really interesting. And of course, if communication relationships are the sort of the soft skills behind that, I know you need to have systems in your business to make those communications and relationships work. And um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you concur with that so how has that developed over time in the business what sort of things have you introduced to make sure that you're always tracking where your prospects and your your clients are well I mean that's a great question actually Gavin because you know when when we started and in fact when I started in recruitment uh people filled in application forms they didn't even have CVs I mean I, I'm happy to say that because I'm trying to convey the changes I've seen. And some of them are better and some of them aren't. Some of them slow you down a bit. But mm. when we launched the business, you know, you didn't have a computer. It was all done with paper and a pencil. I've still got pencil. <laughs> um, I've still got paper. <laughs> but so, but I embraced very early on. I was always very open to trying new stuff. And you know, I thought, well, we ought to go computerized and we ought to do this. And then so you you start with one thing and then you get CRMs and you develop systems. And I mean, in the early days, it was sort of, oh, gosh, we've got a temp out. Someone design a timesheet. I mean, <laughs> it, it was a bit, you know, seat of the pants. Yes. As you get sort of more experience doing, you start the planning gets better. The looking mm. forward gets better. And so you come from a paper-based business to all the technology and you've always got to have an ear to the ground of what's new, what's next and embrace AI and 
And of course, in your industry, and you've got two customers in your industry, haven't you? You've got your you've got your clients, and you've got your candidates, um, yeah. which makes makes the whole recruitment industry very interesting in its own right. And I teach my clients that um, you know the, the the front end of running a business is attracting leads, so that's effectively your marketing. But once you've got the leads, you really need to have a good sales process in place to convert those leads to become either in your, you know, in your case, either candidates or clients. And that's where technology is really important. So we, we know where we've got to in the process and we can, you know, we see people um, are in the chain because the more effectively we do that, the more effectively we convert people. So I totally understand that, but I think it's more complicated for, 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 for in, in your industry because of the two types of clients that you essentially that you're. Yeah, I know, but you, you see, so you get yourself a good uh, a good CRM, and it it links it all for you, and it flags it up in your diary, and it does the work, and it gives you your sales list for the next. I mean, it, you know, Brilliant. technology but, in that respect. Yeah. Um, keeps you on track, and yeah. of course, it's making sure that you get back to people in a timely fashion that's really important in our sort of business and industry yeah. um yeah so what i'm hearing what i'm hearing Bev, from you is that it's actually you didn't mention the word but it's it's innovation it's as circumstances have changed mm. over those 24 25 years you've changed with them but always with the focus of building relationships and and maintaining relationships yeah and, and I don't yeah. know if you're aware of this, but that puts you in the two or three percent of companies that have been trading for as long as you have. So well, I've always embraced, I've always embraced um, rather than shunned. You can't stick with, you know, something that you used to do. You you have to embrace the new, the new stuff. And I listen, you know, some of the team downstairs, they're younger and they, they've got ideas and, you know, I ask them, what do you think of this? And, and and it's important to hear views of what they like using. So, because if they like using it, they'll use it and they'll follow the process. So, yeah, you, you've got to go with change. Excellent. What well, great advice. Bev, it's really been fantastic talking to you and listening to, to the story of your company. Thanks for joining us on this call today. Thanks and, for your um, time. It's been a pleasure. Wish, wish you all the best for the future. Thank you.